Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. So last week, the Eternals trailer dropped, and now we're going to be talking about the Eternals omnibus that came out a few months ago. Reading from the omnibus synopsis, imagine a race of immortal beings possessing seemingly limitless abilities. Once worshipped as gods, this fantastic group left Earth to explore the stars after warring with the Greek, Roman, and Norse pantheons for supremacy over mankind. Now they return, but are they here to help mankind, or are they harbingers of our doom? In 1976, Jack Kirby introduced what was to be his final great Marvel Comics creation, The Eternals. With nearly four decades of experience creating iconic characters such as Captain America, X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Kirby stretched his imagination to the limits with his last epic. Looking beyond the familiar grounds of superheroes, Kirby drew inspiration from speculative fiction and ancient aliens and technology. With this foundation, he crafted comic book epics that took comic book fans into spectacular adventures, introducing characters such as Icarus, Xerxes, Ajax, and the mysterious model of space gods known as Celestials. Jack Kirby's run on Eternals was more self-contained than it was later on after he left the series. After Jack Kirby's 19-issue run, other creators such as Peter Gillis, Sal Buscema, and Walt Simmons have taken over the characters and incorporated them into the normal Marvel Comics universe, so much so that Cersei was a long-standing member of the Avengers. It should also be noted that these characters have deep ties with characters such as Thanos and other Eternals. And with the state of the MCU movies right now, I'm very interested to see what they do with these characters. Will fans respond to a relatively unknown property the same way they did with Guardians of the Galaxy? I guess only time could tell, but for right now, let's just get into this omnibus. Alright comic book people, today we're going to be looking at the Eternals omnibus as I promised at the beginning of this video. So what I have here is the normal standard cover. I did not get the direct market cover, unfortunately. But regardless, we get a cool Alex Ross painted cover in the style of Jack Kirby. On the back we see all the thumbnails for all the issues collected in here including the 19 issue run by Jack Kirby uh, and then a couple of issues of Avengers, a follow-up series for the Eternals, and an Iron Man annual. So if you want to take a look at what it contains uh, go ahead and pause it right here. So Jack Kirby's Eternals. If you're a fan of the Inhumans or Jack Kirby's New Gods, you'll definitely enjoy this because it's very much in the same vein of those stories. So this is a massive omnibus. Recently there was also a collection of just Jack Kirby's uh, work put into a trade paperback and a monster edition as well. Uh, but this collects everything that's in those editions plus more, including some what if issues that I actually forgot to mention as well. So the Eternals Omnibus starts with the Jack Kirby story that was mostly self-contained. It had a lot of references to Marvel characters, but it didn't actually have any crossover with them until Jack Kirby left the series. Some of the characters you might have heard of from this series are the Deviants. The Deviants are kind of the quasi-bad guys, but they were bad guys because of the situation they were put in by the Celestials. A lot of these characters, like the Deviants, cross over into the Thor comics. These characters have always been around Marvel Comics since their inception, in some form or fashion. And definitely one of the biggest takeaways from this run is the existence of the Celestials and basically how the Marvel Comics universe came to be. The story of the Celestials is basically like a confirmed biblical story for this universe. Everything revolves around the Celestials creating Marvel Comics. In a way you could almost say that they're allegories for the creators themselves. The Eternals then appear in an Iron Man annual from 1983. A city full of deviants and Eternals appears and Iron Man has to try and figure out what's going on with that. And we get a little bit of a hind story given by one of the deviant leaders and the Eternals themselves. So here they are teaming up with Iron Man, so officially crossing over into the Marvel Comics universe. And then they get more embedded into the Marvel Comics universe uh, in the pages of Avengers 245, sorry 246. And then on, it's just, uh, they become mainstays in the Marvel Universe. So it's kind of interesting to see Jack Kirby uh, not initially ground these characters in Marvel Comics. It is when Jack Kirby came back to Marvel Comics uh, from his short stint at DC Comics working on the New Gods titles. What I think Jack Kirby was trying to do was use Marvel Comics as just a publisher to get his work out there. I don't really think he had the intention of creating the Eternals to be something in the main Marvel Comics continuity. This series, with the New Gods and all the Fourth World stuff, it really feels like a cohesive story that all could have been connected together, but again, there's different publishers involved. There's only so much this creator could do to cross over with them, but it feels like they were all supposed to be part of this one massive story. So Peter Gillis did a 12-issue series of Eternals, kind of a follow-up to the original run. Uh, again, more grounded in the Marvel Comics continuity, but didn't 
forced itself too much to depend on Marvel Comics continuity. This was around the time that a lot of maxi series were getting popular. Watchmen had just wrapped up, and other series such as Squadron Supreme were coming out from Marvel Comics, so maxi series were pretty hot at this time for characters who didn't have monthly or weekly ongoings. We get some one-off graphic novels involving the Eternals. There's definitely a long-spanning epic story here, so if you're a fan of what people did with the New Gods after Jack Kirby left that as well, this might be in a similar vein where they try to keep in the spirit of Jack Kirby's original ideas, but ultimately it's going to be a little bit different once we get these other creators jumping on and changing things up. So wrapping up the end of this book, we get some dossiers on the characters. We got Icarus, Kares, Crow, Makari, Mentor, Mentor who is also father of Thanos, Cersei, Star Fox, Thanos, Athena, Titan, Zerus and the Celestials. But what I'm also interested by is the lack of appearances from Thanos being probably the most popular Eternal. Uh, he does not appear all that much in this book. And I am curious what the movies are going to do with that connection being with the way that the Marvel Comics movies are right now. So we get a little bit more explanation on the Deviants and the Eternals. Uh, we have some promotional art. I always love promotional art. That's really cool. We get some original pages and sketches. We get an article from Marvel Age 30 from 1985. So yeah, at the same time, Squadron Supreme were coming out as the Eternals. Two great series that came out around the same time from Marvel Comics. It was definitely a golden age for Maxi series. Then we get the introduction that was released in the old version of the Eternals Omnibus by Jack Kirby, which didn't collect all the extra stuff besides the Jack Kirby run. A lot of history packed in this book. There you have it guys, the Eternals Omnibus. If you want to know more about the Eternals, definitely check out this Omnibus, or at least the 19 issue series from Jack Kirby on its own. This Omnibus is still pretty affordable right now, so if you're able to get your hands on it, definitely check it out before the movie comes out. Because once that movie comes out, these things may go out of print very quickly. It retails for 125 bucks, and you can probably find it a recover or a little bit cheaper. I want to thank you guys again for watching. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment and hit that bell for notifications. It's time to jump off the omnibus. Peace, guys.